Okie dokie, pokey. Well, morning everybody, and it's cast time once again, and and this time around, uh, this one here. I didn't actually go looking for this one. Uh, this actually showed up on my uh, YouTube recommendations, and it actually came out a couple weeks ago. I I've heard, I listened to little tiny bits and pieces of it, but it's some interesting music. I guess I probably would categorize it as dungeon synth. Um, the name of this is uh, Subterranean Prison, from the depths in which I dwell. And as you can tell by the uh, album cover slash thumbnail here, yeah, I would call this Dungeon Synth. Holy shit. Okay, but let me, let me go ahead and get this fired up. Um... Yeah, like I said, right now I'm just sound testing this. Okay, I'm just gonna say close enough on that. Um, but otherwise, a somewhat eventful night. Oh, and um, let me let me back up a bit. Um, there are gonna be there are gonna be a few moving parts in this video, so once again, um, get ready for some mistakes. Because I'm not an expert at this. Just I just feel the need to add some video with my audio. Um, but for the most part, um, uh, Gems of War just been going pretty good. Just uh, um, a guy named a guy named DJ Screw turned me on to yet another build that I really like. Um, but its its specialty is uh PVP and just mid tier content. Like you don't want to do the high end stuff with this, cause yeah you'll I mean yeah you'll get you'll get owned in short order order if you do that stuff. But um, but yeah I like and best of all, um I call it the I call it the Guild Toss build of the Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy ability. But anyway, it, it just it just due to the way the build works, you actually uh, come away with a lot of money after the battle's over. So yeah. But I ended up um I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh anyway, I ended up uh, bailing them. I ended up bailing like towards the uh, towards the latter half of the night. It just, just burnt, so. Uh, but otherwise, uh, one big thing that did happen. Uh, my book came in, The Communist Manifesto, and no, I'm not a communist. I just, I just, I, I just had a hankering, hmm. I wonder what it actually is in that book, or... I wonder what the philosophy of communism really is, and not just what this country tells me. I mean, I mean, philosopher Anne Rand probably would give me, probably gave me a better description, but she grew up in Russia, so she would probably, she probably would have a better explanation of how communism actually works. Kind of like, um, now that I think about it, um... She uh, made a movie and wrote a book called Persepolis. She's from Iran. Um, oh, was it Marjorie Satrapi or something like that? But she's a she's an Iranian author, author and cartoonist. But yeah, she she talks a lot about her home country, Iran. So, but yeah, so I I wouldn't be uh, I probably want to be listening to what uh what. American media tells me about Iran or Russia, because you're, again, they're, the the media, especially mainstream media, they're pretty much owned by the, uh, they're pretty much owned by the, the owner class, I guess that'd be the phrase I'm looking for, they're owned by the rich, wealthy corporate people, so, so I wouldn't really listen to them, but, um, but what big surprise about this book I wouldn't even call it a book. It's practically a pamphlet. It's 
to like maybe 10, 20 pages or something. I was expecting like a big old thick sucker. Like a big, you know, big old thick paperback. That, that kind of thing. Like a full blown novel, but no, it's. I guess you would call it a manifesto, but. Manifest, but again, I. The, the word manifesto didn't really click. Like I said, I thought it was just, like I said, I thought it was gonna be like a 100 plus page novel, that kind of thing, but no. So, that'll be a short read. Uh, but um, on that note, I um, I just finished uh, reading Strong Towns. Very influential book right there. Um, it just, basically it talks about uh, um, the, all of society's ills and piss poor city planning kind of go hand in hand. So, just, um, you know, um, you know, big old, big fat roads called Strodes, you know, that makes uh, crossing the street pretty dangerous. That, oh, and, um, let me stop a second. And kind of like yesterday, this is, um, I think this is going to be more geared towards people that have never seen any of my other casts before. They're like totally new to these. So, to those that have uh, that have seen my earlier ones, I'm probably going to be repeating myself here. So. But anyway, um, but, and oops. So yeah, that so yeah, that was a big old goof. I was wondering why it was changing so fast. But anyway, um, but yeah, this this book was a huge influence on me though. Oh there is there was something else I was wanting to say about this. But yeah, all the, I mean, all the good, you know, all the, again, all of uh, society's ills, all the bad things that are going on right now, um, bad city planning also factors in there as well. I, I forgot about, uh, but today we're living in a culture of abundance. That's what I was looking for. You know, it's a culture of abundance. It's what happens when, when you have, when, some people have the infinite funds cheat or you know when you have the infinite gold cheat or whatever it, you just it, you know it just affects how you build cities and stuff and you know since you have such you know basically infinite resources you know you you're pretty sloppy with your your city design that kind of you, you kind of get the idea though So yeah, I don't I don't really want to expound on it a whole lot further, but basically this book is definitely a keeper. But um but it, like I said a few moments ago, one of the big things about it is how uh, this guy here, he was also mentioning the intangibles of bad city planning too. Like I said, you know, obesity, mental health issues, addiction, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it it's uh, in and city design is also a part of that as well. So. But yeah. Um, but otherwise, otherwise not, not really a whole lot else has been going on. Um, I watched another documentary on um, on the FGC, the fighting game community. This one here, I've watched this one before, but I figured, what the hell, why not? Um, went ahead and gave it another watch. Or, yeah, went ahead and gave it another watch, and the, I noticed this one here cast the FGC in a better light. It wasn't like the one that I, it wasn't like the one that I watched yesterday, which, which basically was mostly talking about the racism and stuff. Racism, bigotry, discrimination, especially again, I think um, they had a couple of, they had a couple black women on there, like um, espousing their causes and stuff like that. 
I don't I can't remember the name of the organizations, but uh, they're a, they're a community for black women. So me, yeah, I but but like like I said, it this one here kind of cast them in a better light. Yep, got the soundboard going. Okay. But, um... And I've kind of noticed this. Yeah, this is kind of an impromptu edition. I kind of noticed this, but, uh... It seems the uh, the fighting game phase. I've said this before in other casts, but like the moon, I have my phases. But it, I've got a feeling that the fighting game phase is starting to come back, which is kind of bad timing because uh, in about a month from now, I'm gonna start playing Final Fantasy 14 again. So, uh, so yeah. But both the only thing I could probably think of. Is, uh, I did this back when I was playing Guild Wars 2. God. Really bad preparation. But, like I said, there's gonna be some moving parts in this video. Yeah, there's gonna be some moving parts in here, so expect some mistakes. Um, the, a game like Footsies. I might do that when playing Final Fantasy XIV. Like, if there's long waiting periods, fire up some Footsies and play it. Like I said, I did this back in Guild Wars 2, too. Uh, while waiting for world bosses. I would have, uh, I mean, playing footsies while waiting. I might do it with Final Fantasy XIV as well. It's also one of the reasons why this game is my all-time favorite 2D fighter. Because it's an 8-bit game. You can play it anywhere. No way in hell I'd be able to do it with, say, Street Fighter IV or Fantasy Strike or something like that. I mean, that would really clog up my stream. So... And speaking of that, I did, um, I kind of, I kind of made the rounds with the fighting games. I played, uh, played a little bit of Fantasy Strike as Rook. He's a grappler character. Um, I also played Skullgirls a little bit. Uh, Sarah Bella, I think her name is. But, uh, I guess she's a grappler character. So I played her a little bit. And, um, even, and for, for the first time ever... I actually played footsies online. There was actually somebody else playing. Like, and, like holy shit. Like, up until now, I never saw anybody on it. They're, like, like the community is freaking dead. But yeah, somebody was on there. I jumped in, tried to play with them, but the lag was so bad, it just wasn't working out. Uh, Fantasy Strike had the same issue, too. And both of these... Both of these are advertising, you know, what great rollback net call they have. But yet, I don't think that really makes much difference. I mean, if your opponent is like on the other side of the freaking globe, you know, your opponent's like over in China. I mean, because like I said, the lag was tremendous. I mean, it was, uh, it was kind of like a fantasy strike. Yeah, the lag was, I mean, no, I think the ping was anywhere between two to three hundred. Yeah, two to three hundred. That's a little bit on the high side. Usually, I think the save zone is like around fifty. You know, then you're okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, I'm a, uh, I'm drinking uh, Arizona green tea right now. So. But yeah, it's. But like I said, um, it was, I mean, uh, playing online in Fantasy Strike was kind of an issue as well. I mean, yeah, roll, I mean, rollback netcode works great until it doesn't. But like, like I said, it, I think mean, delay versus rollback, I think that only really, really matters when, when your opponent is not too far away from you. I mean, but again, if he's on the, if he's clear on the other side of the planet, the, the greatest netcode in the world ain't gonna help you. So. But. Oh, no. 
Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. I've said all the things I wanted to say this morning, um, and I'm, if I would have known I was going to say some of the things that I was going to say, I probably would have prepared better. But I didn't really, um, I didn't really jot down any notes or anything like that. I just kind of dived into this. So, but anyway, um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then. Thanks again for coming around, everyone, and see you all next time. Take care.